Well, hello, model fans. <laughs> I stole that line from a buddy of mine, Paul Shirella, who says, hello there, Jeep fans. Anyhow, he, uh, he coined phrase to uh, get out there and drive them Jeeps. And on my other channel years ago, I would say, get out there and work on them Jeeps. Well, we're going to have to come up with a new coin phrase for Watson's models. Like, get out there and work on those models. Or something. I don't know. Let's we'll come up with something. Maybe you guys can have some ideas and throw them in the chat for me. Uh, look, hey, the channel is uh, its slowly growing. It's doing pretty decent. And uh, I'm very grateful for everybody that signed up. I love all the comments I'm getting. We're, you know, we're, I'm trying to write back to everybody that's, that has said hello or whatever. But uh, so just so you know, the, the Watson's Models videos are also being placed on Watson's Wagons until uh, I get enough audience built up in the Watson's Models channel, then I'll stop dropping them in Watson's Wagons. Does that make sense? So if you're watching this video um, in Watson's Wagons, if you go down to the description, uh, there should be a link to this channel, if that makes sense. And I have to go back in and, and check the videos out. But anyways, I mentioned yesterday when we were talking about the, the, uh, the deuce and a half here, um, that I was going to show you the, the diorama that I'm working on. And I'm not going to pull the cover off this and risk breaking it. Because <clears throat> my luck, trying to produce a video, I'm going to doink up something and uh, I'm going to regret it. So, however, I'll get some, some shots and explain to you what I did on certain things. And I want to show you the kits that I used. And, uh, and you know, kind of go from there. So I'm hoping this doesn't... This isn't a very long video, but I digress. Well, before we get into that, I want to show you guys the latest acquisition for, for the shop here. And I found this on Marketplace. <clears throat> Beautiful kit. Brand new. Hasn't been started yet. And I met a really nice gentleman, Vietnam vet. Uh, who was selling some of his things, and uh, he gave me a super deal on this. So obviously, this is one of those we'll get to it later. Probably going to be not until the winter time, because I have a I have the HMS Endeavor that I started probably 15 years ago. So anyhow, yeah, I better get busy, and of course, I got to get started on this dude. I always got my hands in something. Here's my, uh, you know. T90s, T72, 16th scale. I showed you those earlier on the intro video. Just give you an idea of some of the paint work and I, I've done. Um, dulled, dulled down the uh, the rubber fuel lines. I used actually a tire black paint for that uh, to get that effect. I did the weapon system, um, painted the shroud in here. I could I could have done a better job on that, but. Yeah, just really trying to bring out the, the depth of all this stuff. Did the same kind of work on this one. And there's a lot of pieces, parts on this. So if you get this from Hang Along, I got these from Ocean RC. Um, yeah, get you something to drink, smooth libation. When you put this together, take your time, all right? And then you can get in there and play with the weathering and, and all that. Even you got logs on the back of these things. Okay, let's get to the let's get to the meat and potatoes of what we're here for. So, this diorama, this mother beautiful work of art, pretty much came from these kits right here. All right, yep, another AFV Club M eighty eight A one. It's the Berg Panzer, but look, it's the same vehicle that uh, that Jeff used uh, when he was with us in Desert Storm. So he ordered this model, and we also picked up this Ryefield two-in-one kit. has a complete interior. Um, the kit, does, I hate it when they, when they show things, and they don't include the things they show. So you'll see where I scratch-built this rig to lift this motor out, using a little bit of necklace chain and stuff like that. So anyhow, that's, a, that, that's the kit that we used. <clears throat> 
went together very well. Uh, we did put on these metal track links for the Abrams and a similar set of tracks for the, the M88A1. I wanted those tracks to look heavy and sag. All right, we got this USMC tank crew at rest, um, but I did not paint them up like Marines because we're not Marines, we're an army. <laughs> um, but they make a good crew, so we left off the hat and, you know, whatever. I had to look online for a camel. I found this one here from Heller, and there's the, uh, there's what the box looks like. This is like a 1970s vintage kit. So I ordered it, we got the camel, we didn't put all the little, you know, all the little dressy stuff on the camel, I just wanted to keep a raw animal on there. I had some old spare parts from an old Tamiya uh, kit, you know, modern accessory set. So I used bits and pieces out of this to include the MRE, uh, you know, stuff. And then uh, Jeff had found uh, these Iraqi Freedom Tank Crew figures. So what I ended up doing is sort of kit bashing a lot of this stuff to come up with the result that I have. Let me clear all this away, and I'll show you the diorama. Well, here we go. So, like I mentioned in an earlier video, I served with Delta Company 4-8 Cav at 2nd Brigade 3rd Armored Division out of Gelnhausen, Germany. Uh, these markings that you see on this tank are the 2nd Brigade markings, all right? So I chose to do an Alpha Company tank because we didn't have Delta Company tanks breaking down during the war. So I got to make fun of a different company. But you'll notice that the little second brigade decal that's on that fender skirt. I actually designed, I didn't design it, someone else did uh, when I was over there in Germany. But I had to duplicate the stencil. And then we painted all of our company tanks with the same stencil. So all second brigade tanks had that uh, spearhead um, stencil. Now, those stencils don't. Those decals don't exist in this world. So I had to make those decals on the computer and then, you know, do the decal paper. And I, I went with multiple sizes and then I ended up generating um, enough decals. Let's see here. Enough decals and, you know, for 135th scale, 1 16th uh, on up. And that took a while to design. I had a friend of mine uh, convert it into a vector image so it was nice and sharp. And that's how I did it. So I, I like making my own decals if I can. All right. <clears throat> Anyhow, you can see here where we've used the Marine Corps figures. And <clears throat> those that were wearing caps are wearing helmets now. Uh, the, the rifle field kit has a complete interior, which you can see in through the turret. Got the sponson box open. Uh, I should have put more stuff in there, but uh, check out the uh, the water bottles and stuff in the spare road wheel. Fairly decent detail work on the motor, excuse me, the AGT 1500 turbine. General Dynamics uh, Lycoming engine. Um, I did the, uh, so I painted it the best that I could. Uh, I did create the no-step stencils that are on there. And you'll notice that I did recreate the rig. All right. The lifting rig. When this model goes to its home, we'll have the lifting rig, rig hooked to the, uh, to the boom there. And that engine will be dangling. So you can notice that the air filter doors are open. And that the battery doors are open. Well, this kit... <clears throat> They're not like that. You have to actually cut all that stuff out. Same thing goes with the back deck. Now, in reality, let me just leave my phone down here to get a better shot. The, the ventilation decks that you see there would be flipped over and open along with the bitch plate. That's what that funny looking plate is sitting on there um, <clears throat> as they lift it off because you had to access those areas to disconnect things and whatever. The kit did not have that little green extension support bar, so I recreated that with uh, with uh, some plastic uh, stock and came up with a decent-looking deck. 
these parts all fit together nicely in here. You just have to cut carefully when you do it, okay? Also, on the air cleaner doors, you have to make some relief cuts along the sides. So when the one door goes down towards the rear of the vehicle and then the next one towards the front of the vehicle comes down on top of it, that they lip on each other properly. The uh, battery doors, same thing. Um, they're actually a lot thinner than that in scale, so it's a little bit off. <clears throat> but I love how this thing turned out. Um, you know, I just did a, I, I mimicked the actual tank the best that I could from, from what we had. All right, let's go ahead and slide this camera over and get you a, a straight down look here. You can get an idea what the boom looks like. We did use actual cable instead of the string that comes with it. All right, I got a couple of guys hanging out in there. All right, on Jeff's vehicle, he did have the 50 mounted with the shield. Some of the M88s did not have that. I used reference photos for a lot of the other details. And one I'm really proud of is how this smoke exhaust turned out on the back. That's a combination of airbrushing and um, using, uh, you know, pigments. So the decals, we had to get custom numbers, and those were put on individually. You'll notice that the rubber on the mud flaps, how I did the chipping action on it, because if you, you know if you know anything about this, they uh, the paint just chips off that rubber, and so I mimicked that chip effect also on the spare road wheels that are mounted on either side of the track got a spare ball of track there we've got some onlookers you know and uh here's the camel that's how he turned out so i did some airbrushing on him in a couple of different shades the guardrail i can't remember what kit that is but there's a there's a kit out there that you can get i used part of that i scratch built the the uh, road sign uh, post and again I don't remember where I got the road sign but it comes in like a cardboard sheet and has lots of different uh, you know Saudi Arabia Kuwait Iraqi signs and stuff like that so little animals people little action going on if you look down where that soldier has his hand resting you'll notice that i recreated the step that goes into the m88 um those things folded up to the inside and then you close the door the kit did not come with that the kit also did not come with the jerry can holder that's on the inside of the door and the kit does not have a complete interior so uh, what I did was is before I put the two halves together I did put just a basic floor in there painted it white so we had a little bit of a background accent in in the display here. Again, if you look at the tracks on there, you'll notice a little bit of that uh, desert paint flaking off the rubber. <clears throat> All right, here we got some coolers, or a cooler, um, some MREs, things like that. The base, I used a, a, uh, a bulletin board, a cork bulletin board type material. And I only had to shave a little bit of this off. The road was made from cork. And it's just a thin layer of cork. You can see that. And the idea here is that you bend the cork to create the cracks a little bit. And then you take your X-Acto knife and start picking out material. And just get kind of a random crack going. Uh, Scale-wise, they look a little bit large like a freaking earthquake happened when you start putting people next to it but it's a good 10 footer. The way I did the sand, and you'll notice in here, I don't know if you can see it from here, you know, we've got lots of, you know, movement with feet and uh, there's some track rub marks in the sand, <clears throat> things like that. I started with completely covering uh, this base with Elmer's glue or any type of white glue. There is a, a sand mixture that you can buy and I just poured that stuff on there and spread it out, and mushed it down, um, dumped it off, you know, just sort of shook it off. <clears throat> and then I took the tanks and pressed them in. 
in different locations. So it looks like there was some movement around there. Took a couple of figures and did some, you know, little little stomping around so we would have some some little indications. But it's just enough, just enough flow because you can control the glue when you get it on there to look like the wind has blown over the desert and get you some waviness in there. All right, there's another kit that I got <clears throat> that had some basic rock material. So we put some, you know, some, some larger pieces in and then backfilled with some smaller stones. And there's one there. <clears throat> it's just to break up the diorama. But that's it. Left the tow cable on, the, or the, excuse me, the tow bar on the front because they obviously had to drag this thing into position. We got the skirt open on this side. That's where the crew would have gone in and done a, um, you know, some track tensioning. Sorry about this camera work, guys. So we got the track tensioning that's, that, that happened. You know, these back skirts, we would have had those opened up because you have to disconnect the final drives in order to pull the tank engine out. Now, if I was really ambitious, I would have a ground hop cable set going from the tank to the to the engine. <clears throat> I would probably have fuel lines attached to it and all kinds of stuff. But I'll be honest with you, <laughs> this this model took a long time for me to work on, and I just had to get it done. So I hope you like it. Um, I certainly do, but I'm ready for this to go away and to go to its owner. That's it. Um, Nothing too exciting. Just, uh, you know, I got to quit showing you stuff I'm working on and start documenting how I'm working on things, right? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. I, I need all the help I can get here. Uh, I'm going to be doing this for a while, you know? I got a lot of, a lot of stuff to build. And uh, I got to keep food on the table, too. You know, Mama, she's, she's not going to settle for Cheerios and bologna. Just saying. <laughs>